All right. Um, Chris Talent, and I do know some of you, but um, I'm currently the CTO and co-founder of um, Glamhive.com, which is a social e-commerce site uh, for women's <laughs> fashion, um, actually based out of Seattle. Uh, previously in this area, I've worked at Dunhumby, um, Fidelity, and done some independent consulting. So um, I have been using AngularJS for about two years now, um, both with Glamhive as well as Leela.com, which was the prior startup that I worked with, along with, at points, uh, Mike and Garvin. Um, I have about 18 years of experience uh, just in software development in general, um, back to Perl, Java, .NET, um, and lately more uh, JavaScript focused. So um, <coughs> what I am not going to do today is I'm not going to try to give just a, a trainer on UI router. I mean, I think I think there's already been a session, and you can kind of go online and see how to use that. So um, what I'm going to try to take a look at is just with Glamhive, uh, which is a single page Angular JS app, you know, some of the pain points that I've hit with it, as Mike was saying, just how do I make sure that certain states are authenticated? How do I make sure that I get routed through my login process to, to handle that? Um, if I want to launch a modal, you know, can I incorporate that, that into the UI router um, state management? Um, along with some uh, some other features. So um, if you have any questions along the way, um, we can certainly tackle those. And this, this project itself is up on uh, GitHub, so feel free to pull it down and mangle it or ask questions about it. Um, so with that said, um, let me take a quick look at the Glamhive app itself. So this is... Um, a full, just single page, Angular JS application. Um, it's talking uh, purely REST uh, API calls to a Java Spring MongoDB stack that's hosted on Amazon. So um, there is zero server side templating, no JSPs, no ASPs, no um, template creation at all on the back end. So it's all um, within the app using uh, Angular JS, UI router, and Thus, of course, this, this demo. So um, just to give you a little bit of an example, like the login here, launching in a modal as handled by the UI router state management and some of the extensions that I've put on top of it. Um, once we're inside the app, um, they're, of course, clicking back and forth. These are all um, UI router-based states. Um, both that change the URL at the address bar, as well as um, having multiple layers of nested states uh, with parent layouts that handle the formatting and templating. So uh, we'll look at that as well. Um, <coughs> we have features like um, uploading a post, which again is a modal that's both launched from uh, the UI router, but uh, also incorporates some features like being able to reload the browser um, and come in to directly into a modal URL, which would launch the modal. We don't have any state underneath, but it does the UI router and the extension smart enough to see, OK, I recognize my upload URL. I'm going to apply it to a UI router state, pull it up as a modal. And if I do cancel out of this, it's going to make sure that it does supply me with a default state to then go and land on. Um, but so what we'll be looking at today as far as the code goes and the demo is basically stripped straight out of this uh, into the demo. I found a bug that I also <laughs> fixed in the demo that I'll have to go back and <laughs> retroactively fix here, but um, it's all good. So as far as the, the features that I've incorporated into this demo, and they're they're pretty much handled by uh, one big block of uh, JavaScript. Bigger. bigger, better. Is this big enough? Maybe a little bit more. I'm old. How's that? Good. All right. Thank you. So the um, the kind of extension that ch it's basically just one big um, change uh, listener. Uh, that's uh, built into UI router, but um, it handles, if you have a root state um, and you're logged in, it will redirect you to 
one URL versus if you hit the root URL, you're logged out, it'll hit a different URL. Um, as I said, we have nested parent layouts that, we, that we're going to look at. Um, passing parameters through states. So I ran into a case where I wanted, you know, just the Google Analytics UTM type parameters on the address bar, but then trying to figure out how to get them passed from my root state down into the actual destination states took a little bit of uh, Googling and incorporation. Um, again, states that um, force authentication prior to being hit. Um, I also built into UI Router uh, an ability to define titles and metadata within the routing configuration instead of having to have them scattered through my controllers. Your mileage may vary there, but we'll take a look at that. Um, and I have various modal examples, um, opening on a state change, um, closing the prior modal um, optionally so that you don't end up with just a stacked array of modals. Um, this is based on the Bootstrap UI Bootstrap project, the uh, modal the functionality there. So um, it has an extended set of settings that you can basically encode into the UI router routing configuration and pass through. And uh, like I looked at with the, the Glamive site itself, basically having a URL on the address bar that would pop up the modal when you come into the app, um, leaving an empty state underneath, and then when you cancel out, delivering you to a, a home page or some other destination. Um, some things that I, I won't really cover is Angular's, I guess, built-in router versus UI router, because I think the last time I looked at that was a, a year ago. And um, we all love UI router, so we'll just focus on it. Um, right now, the code, as stripped out from, from the production app, is just a big um, event handler. So I think at some point, it makes sense to look, I'll look at some way of trying to package that into a library that's a bit more droppable into some other project just for reuse. Um, I also don't have any example of, um, right now all my routes tend to be in, in one big file. I think since I wrote this originally about a year ago, they've incorporated the ability to have routes defined in multiple, mo multiple modules, but um, we won't be looking at that today. And the use of resolve functions to get asynchronous data prior to hitting a, s a state, I don't have any examples of that for this demo. And we have some resources that, again, um, the GitHub repo that this code is all hosted at, uh, UI router, which, um, of course, I recommend using. And uh, this does rely on the bootstrap implementation of the modal behind the scenes. Um, I guess as an aside, um, I showed you the Glamhive site, but we're also developing a mobile app using Cordova, which is you know going to give us a native iOS shell, which wraps um, fundamentally the same code that you see on the website and a fair amount of the routing. I think, Mike, I guess you did incorporate like the modal launching from the, all right. So, and that's, I think, worked out really well for us too, just to be able to share Angular code services and in the back end, um, I don't know what the percentage would be, but you know, it's 80% common, maybe between the app and the, the site. The, the visual layout's different, but once you hit the service layer, it's all, all the same, so. I guess before we jump into some of the examples here, let me pull up the actual code that we're looking at. And I guess is it worth, should I just give a quick look at kind of how the routing is set up for those who may not be as familiar with it? All right. So you do of course need to include UI routers, um, JS library, but fundamentally defining the routes um, is pretty straightforward. Um, you have a configuration block that's attached to your application. Um, you pass in a little bit bigger. Sure. Two fingers cool. Oh yeah. Two. Oh, look at that! You learn something new every day. All right, better. All right, so. Um, you pass UI router state provider in the location provider is, I believe, part of um, AngularJS itself. Uh, I personally prefer setting HTML5 mode to true. That way, I don't have to have URLs with the pound sign or any other symbol in it. I just get uh, real routes with just. Um, sorry, let me see. 
like like this, you'd see the slash logged in. So that's a route that UI router is going to pick up and apply. I don't have to have any sort of hashtag or anything in it. Um, of course, it does cause a little bit of pain then when you reload the uh, browser because your server has to be able to recognize that and handle the fact that it's you're asking for a path that doesn't exist. So um, you end up with a little bit of custom backend configuration either in Node or Java Tomcat just to be able to understand. You know, when I reload this page, logged in is not really a a concrete server-side entity, so it just serves out the same index.html page that basically everything on the site is the same index.html page pulling up the same JavaScript application. Is that specific to UI route? Uh, I think that'd be the case even for for any routing component where you have real URLs. Um, when you reload the page, it's going to make a call back to the server, and the server is going to have to say, you know, I don't understand what to do with this path, and you just map that path back to your index.html file. With the pound sign, everything after the pound is handled with a fragment, so the, the server never sees it. Right. That's why it's so in, in this case, I'm actually using uh, lineman.js just as tooling, so I don't really have a back-end server in this case, and it's, uh, let me see if I can find the, Mike, any clever way to get this to be bigger? Sorry. All right. What's that? Command plus. plus. Look at that. So this push state here, this is, um, it's running a node server with Express. And so it's basically doing that. It's picking up the fact that you know, I reloaded the browser, asked for logged in path, and it's just serving back out my index.html. So you know whether you're .NET, Java, Node, you're going to have to basically solve the same problem. If you reload a, a concrete URL route, your server has to be able to understand to pass the HTML, kind of your root index back. So let's see. I do set basically my otherwise state here is the equivalent of a 404 page. So if if it doesn't recognize any other state, just return a, a not found state. Um, and besides that, let's skip these for a second. Go to something a bit simpler. So this is defining my a home page state, no layout. So. Um, the dot state is on the UI router class. I give it some sort of state name that I can use to identify it and call it from within other parts of my application. Um, this is the URL that you would then see, <coughs> excuse me, in the browser on the address bar. A template URL to actually pull up the HTML to render into the page. And you can provide it, as you can see here, like with a, uh, sorry, with a controller method or controller that would be uh, provided to that or for that page. So here, again, I just, in this case, I have one big file that defines all of my states. I think there's probably a, a better best practice, but I um, haven't found it yet. So open to suggestions there. <coughs> um, and the extension that's kind of handling some of the, the modals, um, the authentication enforcement, that is being provided in a run method, a run function on the application itself. And fundamentally, I'm just listening to the UI router state change start event. So as you would transition, or as you would click a button, as you would click a link, as you would reload the page, and the AngularJS app starts to run, UI router picks it up, looks at the address bar, sees where your URL is, or looks at a state that you're specifically telling it to go to, and it fires off the state change start event. So um, fundamentally what I'm doing here is I'm examining metadata on those state declarations that we just looked at, and I'm making some decisions on it. Is this a page that needs to be authenticated? If so, you know, I'm going to stop the state change. I'm going to direct myself somewhere else, store the state that I was originally heading to so that I can then come back to it after the logins actually happened. Um, for modals, um, I'm intercepting the fact that, okay, you said in the state declaration that this should be modal. I'm going to intercept it and just launch it through uh, through UI modal. So when it comes to modals, I'm not actually letting UI router handle it. I'm, I'm declaring it and I'm letting UI route, router handle the, uh, the knowledge of that state, but I'm actually intercepting the, the view handling of that so that I can push it up into the, into the modal. Um, and I also do a little bit of, I have a page context where 
I define, I can have the state declaration define a title, meta keywords, and this block of code then just pushes it into my shell page so that you'll see the title show up and the metadata show up in the, uh, on the browser itself. So we'll come back and look at parts of this uh, as we look at some of the uh, demonstration. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast, too slow, just right? All right. Okay, so uh, one of the first things I had to tackle was I wanted people to be able to hit my domain name and if they were logged in already uh, based on some sort of cookie or authentication token, direct them to uh, you know, a logged in page like we're looking at here versus if they hit that root URL and they don't have any authentication, I can't find a cookie, I can't find any sort of local storage, I'm going to send them to the welcome page that we saw out here. So if I come into, for example, my root URL here, it basically says, okay, you're not logged in, send you to welcome. Uh, when I log in, if I hit that root URL, you can see that it's directing me back to the uh, back to this page. So that's not actually something that I needed um, this block, the change handler for. That's just handled by um, an on enter function on the state itself. So this home state is what we were trying to hit, and UI router recognizes that the uh, slash here just represents the the root of my domain, and I basically say okay, if I'm logged in, go to my logged in page instead. If I'm not, then go to my, uh, my prompt, my please log in. Um, I did notice, uh, I was telling Mike that I upgraded all my libraries in order to uh, make sure that this all worked with the latest and greatest and hit a point where um, I was, it's throwing some like type errors and I found a nice GitHub uh, discussion uh, that had some recognizable names and faces about how the on enter was throwing errors. I think Doug would recognize that. Yeah, st state changes in an on enter have weird side effects because the state change isn't completed. You're in the middle of a transition, so when you initiate a new transition, there's actually some. Your, your internal state is all confused because your previous state change hasn't changed. But it only shows up in a couple of corner cases. It's usually okay, except when it's not. Right. And, it, <laughs> <laughs> right. and isn't that always how it works? That's always how it works. And in this case, uh, you know, my actual prod application is it's, it's you know, Angular 1.2. And a, actually, it's probably a still, still the same level of UI router. But it was only when I went to like the 1.3 beta release candidate that I suddenly started to get those errors. So I'm not sure what's, what's changed underneath the surface. But... Um, but fundamentally, that's that's the trick. So when I hit my root URL, you know, in some way, check to see if I'm logged in or not, and then go to the appropriate uh, page. Um, I found that the states that I wanted to go to uh, needed to have concrete URLs. Um, at first, I just tried to have it be just the slash, and, and there may be a better solution for it, but I found that UI router would sometimes get confused about not being able to understand what URL I was really on if I had basically a pair or a, a triad potentially that all kind of mapped to the same URL. So, so I do give my logged in and logged out states um, a concrete URL that you'd see in the in the browser. Let me see. While we're here, let me talk about the URL pra passing parameters. So, the other slight insanity that you see here is. Um, this little line that's describing the various parameters that I want to optionally take on the route. So what I didn't want is I didn't want it to be actual a component of the path itself. So I didn't want, for example, typically when you're looking at UI routes, you know, you're going to have you know, some ID, something else, uh, your typical kind of restful path. Um, in this case, what I wanted was a bit more of taking a UTM medium, UTM content, and being able to pass those in. So, and just as, a, as an example of you know, what that might look like, is it might have some sort of ad campaign out in the real world that wants to, 
talk to this URL. Um, and of course you saw my, my home block really doesn't do anything else except direct you somewhere else based on whether you're logged in or logged out. So <clears throat> I didn't have any, I don't want to handle my UTM tags or any other parameters there. So when you actually enter this, it has hit the state, the home state, decided I'm logged in, and it actually then goes through to apply those parameters to my destination state. And the trick there was to basically describe, and you don't have to have any sort of values here, but you describe your query string uh, with the basically the keys of the parameters. Um, then when I actually hit my state handler, I have to uh, create a parameter map out of those parameters that are on the state and pass them into my destination state here is params. So it's basically saying, okay, I might see UTM medium. I'm going to build a little map of uh, out of those state params and I'm going to forward those on to my destination state, which again, then has to optionally describe the uh, parameters on its URL. If you don't have this block here, then they won't be passed through. Um, in, can you have an equal to or something if there's no? That's an excellent question. You could do a ternary there. It's actually supported in the latest version, I think, but it might be, I think if people are finding some bugs with the previous yeah, It seemed like there was some discussion on how to even handle this kind of thing um, on the GitHub, but again, if someone has, uh, has seen a better way to do this, um, I'm actually all ears. I mean, this definitely seems like something that's very clunky to have to handle. The params have been totally overhauled, but they're also now more cumbersome to write because now every param has defaults. You can like so now each param could be its own like object hash. You can where you set options for each param, so it's a little more upfront, but then you maybe don't have the ugliness at each state. You know what I mean? So is that on latest? I know I think I have version zero dot eleven. I think it's on the latest. Yeah. Okay. So that's something I'll eagerly wait to. Uh, let's see, okay, so parent layout. So as we look at this page, um, what I actually have is a parent layout that has my navigation on it, um, my nice little box here, and then the interior of this page is basically a nested state where it's always getting applied to the, with the parent layout. Um, of course, that's something that's really common in you know, any sort of server-side templating language. You have your Apache tiles or, or whatever that lets you uh, nest in layer states. So with this, you can see, for example, here's my demo page without its actual wrapping layout. Um, it's very simple to get going there. So let me find my, my navigation layout. So I create a layout file that's just a standard Angular template. I create a nested UI view in that. And the trick to then getting it applied through UI router is in my routes configuration, I first define a state that just represents the shell, that represents that parent layout. Um, I define it as being an abstract state. I'm never actually going to hit it um, directly. Um, I can't recall exactly, but I think if you don't do that, you, you, can, you can actually have parent states that apply, basically prepend their own URLs to nested states. In my case, that's not something I was interested in. I just wanted more of a transparent layer that would provide the navigation wrapper. Um, I define my layout file, and again, I can have a, a completely misnamed um, controller, but I can provide a controller specific to that layout that might help me do things like logging out, logging in, um, pulling user data to then display in that uh, nav bar. So when I want to then use or apply my nav navigation layout to a state, uh, for example, the logged in state, I just tell it that the parent of that state is my navigation layout. Or if I had a maybe a blank layout that I wanted to pull some CSS or JavaScript in but didn't have any actual content, I might have a blank layout that basically I want to wrap the page in, it doesn't have any content, but I would just do the same thing. So for any state that I want to have a parent layout, 
and just define the, the layout separately as its own state and then pull it into my target state. Questions or comments or, again, best practices that have been seen elsewhere? Do you, so you can define parents either by denoting the state name as like uh, whatever, blank layout dot home logged out, or you can define it by adding the parent Parent attribute. Is there any? Did you find any benefits of doing it that way over the other way? Right, right. So I could have, I could have instead said basically navigation layout dot home logged in. Um, <clears throat> I looked at that personally. I felt that I liked it to be a bit more explicit what was going on. Um, I mean, I can see the argument for uh, doing it this way, just so that you don't have the extra, you know, you save some a line of code and it's implicitly implicitly done. I, I guess I just preferred the very explicit, sure. here's exactly what's going on. And I think the way you have it now, if you or somebody would do some kind of refactoring for it, would work a little. Yeah, because you just change. Well, and I, I wouldn't want to have to go hunt through, yeah. although I think. Yeah, so I was, was going to ask, does that affect all the UIS refs? If, if you specify the parent this way, then when you set your UIS ref, you just set it to home logged in, right? You don't have to set it to yeah I, yeah, I definitely can just set it to home logged in. I'm not sure if you did it with a dot notation. You may still be able to do that. I'd have to go experiment with that. But There's been some bugs around it with kind of what you're talking about where people aren't sure when to use the fully qualified path versus like the state that he's provided. So, but I think they've been sorted out. So I think you're safe. And in some cases here, I mean, I, I'm probably a couple months at least out of date, so there might have been advances in the last uh, few revisions that I haven't picked up. But again, I, I just like personally the clarity of knowing that's exactly what's going on. Uh, let's see. So requiring authentication. So for example, uh, this is a page, a state that does require me to be authenticated. I can reload it. And as long as I'm logged in, I'm fine. If I came back to my first window, log out there, and then try to reload my state here, it's going to just redirect me to a modal to let me log in. And then once I do log in, take me back to the state. So what are you doing to persist the state across the page refresh? Um, in this case, uh, like my logged in, status, I'm, I'm just cheating and I have local storage, so I'm just taking a flag that says, hey, I'm logged in uh, in that, um, which for purposes of the demo works out pretty well. Um, in practice on on the production site, I just have a cookie that has an auth token that I'll pass back to the server, verify that it's, that I'm still logged in, that that's still a valid token, and then uh, load the page up. But yeah, in this case, it's just I'm cheating with local storage. Um, so the code that actually handles that, <coughs> and as far as defining state, let me find my state there. So uh, with the UI router states, you have the ability to define an arbitrary map of additional metadata for the for that state. So in this case, I have defined my own flag that says, okay, auth true. Whenever you hit the state, you have to be logged in. If you're not logged in, it will pass you through some other state in order to uh, get you to log in and then return you here. So if we look at the routing code, um, <clears throat> so again, this event handler is called anytime that I'm starting to transition to a state, whether it's from reloading the page, clicking a link, uh, programmatically calling a state. So basically all I'm doing here is saying, okay, well, let me look at that state, my to state, the place I'm going, is that one that both has some sort of data defined, and if so, is it one that has to be authenticated? If so, um, I'm going to basically tuck away my pre-logged in state, the, the place that I am wanting to go to. So in this case, I'm wanting to go to my logged in page. I tuck that away on the root scope to use later, uh, prevent the state change with my prevent default, and then redirect myself to my logged in state. So whether logged in, you know, whether logged in state is a modal, whether it's just a, you know, flat page on the site, the same thing holds true. Um, then in order to get back, let me find my login. Something I'd like to try to consolidate a little bit, but um, this is the the event handler for my login button click on my pop-up. 
And what I do there is uh, I, I fake my login so that I can uh, keep myself uh, in local storage. Uh, but then I peel my pre-logged in state back off the root scope, if there is one. Um, I close, in this case, my modal, since I know from my app that I'm in a, in a modal. And in a little timeout block, I say, OK, if I did have a pre-login state, um, go ahead and transition to that state. So I come into my logged in page. It said, hey, wait, you need to be authenticated. Uh, it's, it tucked away the state I was going to. I have logged in now. And it's saying, OK, I found my pre-logged in state. I was going to that authenticated page. Uh, go ahead and continue that. If not, it takes me back to my home page, to my root. And as we looked at before, um, this home will then understand the fact that I am now logged in and send me to like slash logged in. Um, what I found, and the reason I have this timeout, is it's basically a timeout zero. So it's basically saying execute this as soon as the currently executing block of code is done and Angular's kind of released the, I guess, current thread of execution. Um, if I tried to mix it up, then I got some indeterminate results between which state I might end up on. Sometimes I might end up on home when I really wanted to be on my pre-logged in state. So, so I am letting kind of the, the UI router and the underlying state handling go ahead and finish executing, which may start to initiate some other state transition. I'm going to then intercept that and take myself somewhere else. Excellent. Yeah, Had my solution. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So what that does, just in case you're wondering, is let the current state fully complete before executing the next state transition, so you don't end up with these like your race conditions. Right, race conditions. Yeah. So Chris, why don't you pass in um, instead of putting this previous login state on the root scope? Why don't you pass it in as a param to this state? state.go. Any particular reason? You're, like if you go to your, um, where you're actually handling this in your router extensions.js, um, where you say state.go, why not pass in that pre-login state as a, as a set of params to say, hey, login, go here when you're done. Any reason in particular? Or? Because I've already initiated the state change. I, I need to know I need to know in my login handler where I want to end up going. So at that point in time this code would not be executing. Well could you pass it to the state? So that you can pass parameters to a state. Are those parameters that you could pass? Does that make sense? Yeah, except that. Oh. Like uh, in your on enter when you call state.go, you pass in some params as an object. He would have to set up yeah. on that state there on line 63. Mm -hmm. uh, he would have to accept the those params, the, that, those params there on this state transition, right? Mm -hmm. To say, yeah. follow up with. Or All right, where am I going to go back yeah. to? Yeah. But you put them on root scope, which is kind of like global. Yeah. Okay. We'll look into it. Yeah, <laughs> You can always put it on a service instead of having it on global. That way. Right, that's true. So that global, it's hidden it's from, this, from the scope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mike, you can get that done in the. Back to that. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to that login controller, there's I had another question. Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Right in the middle. Yep, lost it. There we go. I do. I do like the idea of having it on a like on a, a service or something. Service, yeah. Which I, I think I started introducing that pattern into this code, like after I wrote this. So, it's I'm kind of I've been at that stage of if it works. Just <laughs> <laughs> right. Nothing wrong with that. Security context. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, you could. Put uh, it there. Good point. Yeah. If I already have a, a good place for it. Or context, context. Meta context context. We'll get yeah. into this endlessly <laughs> looping. Now, I do like the security context too, since yeah, it's basically already 
involved in the whole mechanism. So, so passing, having like a page context defined uses basically uh, the same mechanism. So an example of that is um, this page has a title. I'm also setting some metadata in the background. Um, and the code to do that, if we look at my route configuration, I've defined, again, rather arbitrarily, a, a page uh, object in my data for the state. I've told it I might have a title. I might have one or more uh, meta tags that I want to define on the state. Um, now, the title is obviously, it's, you know, it's clear why I might want that, because, of course, the, the user is going to see it on the browser. Now, the meta keywords is a little bit more interesting, like why you might want that, because I think, at, to date, the search engines still really aren't processing the dynamic page, so wouldn't see this looked at from a dynamic perspective. Um, but uh, I've had some success using prerender.io, which on the server basically intercepts requests coming in from bots, be it Google or Bing or Facebook, um, and has a service call back to my app, execute my page, and then feeds the static HTML stream like back through the server to the bot. So it does pick up these meta keywords. So and it will serve you know flat HTML content with the, the keywords to the bot, which has helped me a lot with just kind of the search engine optimization value of the of the site, as well as like if I want Facebook or something to pick it up, they have a bot that comes behind the scenes. So that's where these uh, the metadata was important for me to to serve, even though again the end user per se won't be seeing it, but but it's important for the bots. Oh, and I guess the, the code that drives that is down here at the bottom of my state handler. So it's, it's again, similar to the auth saying, you know, hey, do I have some sort of page context? Uh, if I have a title, um, set it on a, a page context that's accessible by the layouts. And the same thing with meta keywords. So those end up just being bound to my title tag here. And I have a nice ng repeat to spit out the uh, key value pairs for my meta keywords. Questions, comments? Right, let's... So I'm um, looking at some of the, the modals then. Um, <clears throat> with that block of code, I can handle modals that pop up in the same window, modals that, as we looked at earlier with the upload functionality, can pop up in another window, and then when I exit out of those, they return me to some underlying state. I have modals that do require me to be authenticated. So in this case, my modal requires authentication. Again, if I log out and then reload the page, I get redirected and then return back to my modal state. And um, modals can have controllers as well. So in this case, I'm just providing some nice, uh, nice data for that. Um, the modal can pass through my UI my UI bootstrap modal options. So in this case, I've told it make a small modal, uh, make a static backdrop, so I can't just click and have it dismissed. I have to dismiss it directly. Um, and we have parent modals that can either launch and nest or uh, have a flag so that when the modal gets, the next modal gets launched, it'll flush out any of the, any of the prior, prior modals. So as far as how those are defined, um, the, the root, the, the, I guess the most basic case is just saying, yes, I want it to be a modal. So that'll be picked up my, by my state handler, and we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, I might have, yes, it's a modal, and yes, I want to make sure that it's authenticated. Um, 
um, you can optionally then provide uh, an object of data, some sort of settings, and again these are the UI bootstrap modal settings, and they, they just get applied to the modal state when I'm creating it. And have a flag to basically say, you know, this is a modal that when it comes up it needs to be the only modal open. I don't want it to be nested, kill anything that's already outstanding. Um, that is an entertaining exercise in <clears throat> manually keeping track of which modals are open and uh, should, they be, should the state be launched as a modal, has it been handled already by, by my authentication handling code. And again, this, is, this block of code is probably, probably something that can be refactored into probably three pieces, one that handles the auth, one that handles my title metadata, and one that, one that handles the, uh, you know, the, the modal launching. But again, for purposes of this, it was pull it out of the code. I know it works. Uh, anything I tried to roll on my own last night would have probably broken here, and then we'd be watching me do live coding, which wouldn't be good for anybody. So um, if this has not been handled by my authenticated state code, and I do have modal defined, uh, first thing I'm going to do is check to make sure that I don't, ar don't already have the state open. I don't want to actually end up with you know two or three versions of my login window, or two or three versions of my upload window. So I'm basically going to make sure I'm not already there. Again, prevent the default handling. I don't want the UI router to complete the state management for me. Um, if this modal has a flag saying, you know, close the prior, um, then I'm going to run through the ex existing modals I have, find anything, and close it. And so basically, everything in my modal by state name is going to be going to be gone. Any existing modal gets closed. So at this point, uh, I've now decided, yes, I need this modal, this state to open as a modal. I've decided, okay, did you tell me that I needed to kill anything that was already outstanding? And I'm going to set up the configuration, the UI bootstrap modal configuration for launching that state as a modal. So um, this is where I basically take, I take the state declaration and I just handle it using UI modal. I mean, I, I'm not really relying on UI router at this point, I've just kind of hijacked its process for my own um, my own evil designs. Um, if this uh, modal configuration was more than just true, so if it was you know something where I was defining maybe a size or the backdrop or a window class, then I go ahead and take my default modal configuration and apply those settings to it. And you know, quite simply, launch my modal using the Bootstrap modal. Store that uh, by state name so that I can then either make sure it's closed, make sure I haven't, you know, don't have two open, or if I need to, run through them all and kill them all. And regardless then of how that state is closed, and this is specifically for the case where uh, I'm in a new window. And reload here. So I, I don't have any prior state. If I if I launched my modal in the same window, I know that if I kill this modal, I have basically a home to go to. I have a state that you're already at. Whereas if I launched it in a new window or the case where I reloaded the page, um, I don't have any any current state. So um, what I don't want to have happen is I don't want to close this modal and end up on a a nice blank screen. So I'm going to just provide a default so that I can go back to to my home base. And um, that is just a simply a quick check for, regardless of the success or failure of that modal, or I guess really close versus dismiss, um, check to see if I had a state name. If I don't, just go home. Any questions about that? Right now, I am specifying the auth on every state that I want it on. Um, I kind of went back and forth on would it be which way should I assume is the default? Should I assume that states are either authenticated by default or kind of open by default? So what happens if a state has a parent and that state's parent is auth, but the child's state is not explicitly auth? That's an excellent question.
there's probably dragons and monsters there. I think, um, I don't know, let's, uh, let's try that. And probably redirect. Is, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure. I've never actually tried that out. And if so, then there's probably an edge case there that you could get in trouble with your return to state. Because if it was firing a state change event for the parent and it thought that needed to be authenticated, then when you exited, you know, when you're done and completed the login process, I'm not sure exactly where you would, where you would end up going. Um, let's I guess this kind of leads to my other question. It seems like you've done a significant amount of UI routing here, which is, I think, cool. Uh, have you done anything about trying to write JavaScript unit tests to verify that your routing is doing what you expect it to do? No, no not yet. Um, we have any other problems? What's that? We have any other No, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, um, no, I, you know, with, with Glamhive, and I, I've been working on it since November, and I've been pretty much on the side being the only developer there, so I've been focusing on let's crank the features out and we'll worry about whether they work. Yeah. They seem to work, um, <laughs> but we all know how that works, right? Oh, yeah. The, so. the, the only thing that really bothers me about testing states is the logic around state changes, which is frankly where all the bugs are in UI routing. Right, and we're inserting code into that as well. Right, and it's there's a lot of edge cases in there about what to do in these situations that is pretty painful sometimes. And I, you know, honestly, with the exception of again, like I said last night when I was getting this all upgraded to the latest and greatest, and started seeing the same kind of errors on that on ender. I mean, I'd never had any problems with this. I mean, I've been running under variations of this now for probably a good six months. So I, I guess I haven't felt the pain of kind of the oddities with the, the state changes. But that said, I mean, I, you can see in some of the code like that login handler, um, you know, I guess I did I did feel some pain there in making sure that I had to peel the pre-login state off before I closed it so that didn't get wiped out by. So in, in production, how many states do you think you're running? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, Pretty fair number. Um, 100, 200? I don't think I have quite 200. Um, I want to say. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of. Yeah, I I don't I it's in the the tens, but maybe 50. I'm not sure. Do you have any idea how many you have, Mike? I was asking Mike. How many I have. Um, yeah, it's in the tens. It's less than a hundred. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I think ours is like hundred and fifty. What? My, my other project is almost about to pass a hundred. I think, <laughs> I think it's before. actually using Angular router, not UI router. Really? It's a little different. I think before I would get to that point with the with this app, I think what I would do, and what I really want to do, is I want to break it into parts. Um, yeah. I mean, I have clearly delineated like areas of the site, and so I think before I ended up with 100 or more routes, I would break it into, and here's my, my posts, kind of Angular app, and here is my profile mm -hmm. and editing Angular app, and here is my kind of points and redemptions Angular app. Um, that way, if nothing else, it's going to improve my load speed Can for the very first. Router extensions JS, you have one on change event you're handling. Um, can't you have multiple on change? Yeah. You can register them. So you could break that up into like three pieces instead of just the one big one if you wanted to. I can, and I, and I did debate trying to do that for here, but I think order is going to be important well, for me. The reason I ask is because I use two of them and not the third. Right. <laughs> so I'd love to delete some code if you're ever interested. Yeah, and, well, and now, now that I have it separate and I have the nice little yeah. kind of test I can apply to it, I probably will try to split it out into its components. Um, it, it, what would be really nice is to have some facility built into UI router where I could almost like resolve 
and that's one thing I want to look at. Does, I don't know if there's any way that maybe I could hijack resolves to do some of this instead of having a state change handler. I, I've never really played much with I resolves. Think that what you're doing is the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah. I mean, this is where you're supposed to put the code. The modal is a brand new way I've never seen before, and it's nice. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, as soon as you showed me that, I took it and used it in the Ionic project, and it worked really well. I was like, wow, that yeah. needs to be shared right away. Because we always have people wanting to know how to do modals. We've always done them like in on enters or things and or controllers of the state. So I think that's really a good idea. Yeah, I did. I mean, I did a lot of looking at all the various suggestions, and I know like the UI uh, router project has kind of that FAQ section where they describe some high level approaches to do it. I guess what, what uh, it works, and it's great, and I, I mean, I love the fact that it works, but what bothers me is it just feels, it doesn't feel elegant. It feels like there should be some better way to build it and wire it in. Um, but I wouldn't even call this extension. I'd say you're just using the right router. It's a snippet, in my opinion. Like you're using the state change handler to, and the data to do a totally legitimate thing that your project needs. I'd say, if anything, you could break out some of that and put it into a service again that just handled your modal stuff. You know. So that'll, that'll be my. And that would let me inject a different modal handler. It's almost like you need a state change start <laughs> pipeline. Right, because and so then you you say use the auth, use modal, use page content, and yeah. pipe them through, and that's how that you can get your your ordering, but also your separation. Yeah, right, and that's why I didn't do it composable. last night because I realized I'm going to have to like basically come up with my own kind of event ordering system to be able to handle those. But like our security stuff is the same for my project, years. Right. but the modal stuff has to be different. So I think that is basically basically it. That's all I got.